I'd like to introduce Zen Garcia of Fallen Angels TV. Zen has his radio ministry and, and TV ministry. And uh, Zen, would you like to say a few words about, uh, about your ministries? Yeah, I'm, um, basically I'm, I'm not a pastor or a preacher or even any kind of a church authority. I'm just a truth seeker and a fellow investigator, and, um, and I'm just sharing really what I, I've found as far as uh, in my life and of research and seeking the truth and serving the Lord. And um, there's many things, you know, a lot of revelations that the Lord has led me to. The First and foremost, the, the skeleton key, in my opinion, was the whole, the conclusion as far as Cain and um, his being a hybrid, uh, the first hybrid child of, of Satan, Lucifer, Samuel as described in the Targums and several other different things. But um, that was the skeleton key to unlock all the other things that the Lord then led me into with the Nephilim, the fallen angels, and, and a lot of the other things that we cover on our radio show with the New World Order and the, um, the conspiracy, the, how they you know, use uh, lies and deception and how they do things and cover them up in order to push an agenda, the whole problem, reaction, solution, and how the New World Order and Satan and his sources work through division and controlled opposition. And a lot of times what we see as a, you know, a division among the minorities is, is really just false because uh, it was created by the elite um, only, you know, to sire, um, to sire tension and to create war. And they profit off funding both sides of of doing that over and over and over. And that's also how they um, centralize power, wealth, and control, is by funding these wars over time, over and over and over, profiting at the expense of the people, um, you know, slaughtering the masses and blood sacrifice to their, to their fallen angel gods and to Lucifer and uh, all those that rebelled against them. And so... There's so much that's going on in this world that is of a incredible spiritual nature that people don't understand and um, and won't understand unless you get the knowledge of what the Lord is trying to reveal through His Word, through His prophets and His saints and His apostles and and all His holy books, because all these things are contained therein. And uh, even though they sound like you know, lunatic bridge as far as sources or, or the, the perspective that we're bringing forward, this is the discernment that the Lord is leading so many people to. And we're getting confirmation from everybody all over the world. And even though many of us are still, you know, we're all still learning from each other and none of us have all of the pieces put together, there's so much information coming out now that really, truly, there's nothing new under the sun, and, and everything is being unfolded and unveiled. And I think if we pray in fellowship and as a group together, that really the Lord is going to reveal everything, whatever it is, uh, all the secrets, whatever questions we have, that He will reveal to us all. Things. Okay, uh, that, that is uh, Zen Garcia, and I am Professor Truth. We're going to begin an interview today uh, to allow uh, Zen to expouse some of his most recent research and bring forward to you the truths of, of eternity that have been hidden from us and that Zen has uncovered in much of his reading of, of many texts and, and uh, outside of scriptures as well as scripture being the foundation. And with that, we'll, uh, we'll proceed. Brother Zen. Excellent. Good to talk to you, brother. I just wanted to ask you, have you had time to to check out the War Scrolls? I've read some of them, but I haven't read all of them. And uh, I've been focusing on the second one because it has dreams and interpretations. But my question is, is there anywhere where you can actually find the War Scrolls text and read it for yourself? Because I'm not even finding that contained within the within the book. Yeah, because it's kind of like that rabbi's uh, view of the war scrolls. Right, exactly. 
Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I do know. I had heard at least that the war scrolls were found as part of the Nag Hammadi collection. Hmm. But they're being hidden pr- quite well. And I, I also heard that they reveal uh, many, many uh, angel wars during the times of Moses and and the and the times of the twelve tribes being here. That in fact the angel wars were in full uh, force, and that th- they. Moses and the other prophets and and uh, people of God were actually drawn into these angelic wars, and that's what the war scrolls describe. I can see that. I can totally see that. I would, in fact, say that the angel wars are still going on. Yeah, I don't know if you um, know about the Tribulation Now, the you know tribulationnow.org, that's a website, and they've been um, writing a lot of articles, and they're getting a lot of coverage, too. They uh Steve Quill often cites from their sources and stuff. But anyways, um, they have been waking up to all of this, and my book and a lot of our work has been instrumental in doing that for them. So their whole, I mean, their whole community um, has come over and has, you know, joined the Fallen Angels Network, and um, and it's just, it's, it's taking off so much. There's so many players coming into it now. We have a uh, Kenneth Beer he used to work with um, uh, um, Bill Cooper and was part of that Kaji network and all that. And he's now helping us out. There's so much coming on. It's just, it's crazy. And then we've been talking, I don't know if you know about the dollar bill, um, the prophecies on the, you know, all the dollar bills and my friend Jonathan Cluck deciphered all that. But that is amazing stuff too. Yeah, I um, started listening to uh, I think most of your podcast on that. That is uh, very interesting. Yeah, he, he actually the Lord made him go in front of the FBI and present this information to them, and they were blown away that here you have before and after depictions, representations on our currency that has been encoded into the money that shows actions that took place later after the currency was printed and these are terrorist events that happened in our country you know i mean it's just it's it's unreal you know um i don't i don't think too many people have had time to listen to my three-hour talk i did with pastor wilhelmson uh i guess it was on friday morning i haven't had a chance to do that but that is one of the top things for me um Uh it's I inc- want to get into that so bad. I'll tell you, it's incredible, uh, Zen, because uh, what you just said about the dollar bill prophecies, we we go into, I can go into it a little more deeper here if you want, but basically Pastor Wilhelmson has, I, has determined that the fallen angels have pr- principally two primary, quote, technologies. One is time travel and one is cloning. And um to 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 discuss a a postulate on how the dollar bills might have prophecies on them way back when when uh, lucifer and w- was cast out now apparently he's going to be cast out in the future so we have to not confuse right. the two yeah. events and maybe you could yeah, go yeah. into that and give me clarity but um the original uh losing of the original battle when when uh, they were quarantined to this prison sector of the galaxy um they had technology of time travel and 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 what they did was they went into the future and they found a timeline where they were most uh successful and god this this is the second thessalonians strong delusion that applies here's what's so cool right this second thessalonians chapter two delusion we read it, and it certainly applies to us. But guess what? It applies to Satan too. He's, right. He's being deceived. But he picked a timeline. He picked a timeline where God allowed him to be deceived to think he wins, and and therefore, knowing the pa- end from the beginning, he has had to orchestrate all events exactly on time and precisely because any deviations puts him on a different timeline. So, mm-hmm. so. 
the, the prophecy on the money obviously could have been if you see the future you 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 know the events that you have to orchestrate perfectly right. in line on that timeline and so you go ahead and make the money that way and and you kind of know all these events and when they're going to happen and it's right. a, it, it's it's a it's a trap for both Satan and it's a deception for the humans or people that do not align to Jesus Christ. It's it's a dual a dual deception which when Wilhelmson goes into it, it was just I was just sitting here in just amazement on how, how that works. Oh, and it's also a confirmation for the people of God. because um, if all this stuff has been encoded and the Lord reveals it like he showed it to Jonathan and then Jonathan reveals it to our community. I mean, there's no other way. There's no other way for it to to come out. Who yeah. would have ever uh, been able to know that? But you it's see what I mean? It, do you see what I'm saying? It he had to he had to make it that way and stay on that timeline because that's oh, the only- right, right, right. Oh yeah, I totally totally see that. They're they're trying to do their thing too. Um, uh, you know, as much as the Lord is fulfilling all of His. And he's allowing them to do theirs according to his will as well, because he knows where it's all going. Exactly. Um, and he knows that they, even though they think they're going to win or that they have a chance to win, there's no creature that can go against its creator and win. I mean, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So. It's it's kind of uh, ironic in a sense, but you know that's part of the blindness that is set in. What what right. what's coming to me from our talk and and even now, is God has put a blindness not only on us, which we can get into. I have a new understanding on the angel theory. We're we're a new prototype, and we can talk about that in a minute. But um, uh, there's a blindness on the earth dwellers and the sojourners, or the wheat and the tears. And there's also a blindness in the spiritual realm. All the spirits that were cast to this virtual reality holographic time time capsule, in a sense, which is really just a uh, advanced prison, any spiritual entity that's cast in here also has a blindness of a spiritual nature put on them, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've read some somewhere, too, um, about they were, were made to drink like a cup of forgetfulness. Too, um, yeah, I've before heard that. coming into the flesh, yeah, and and of course, yeah, we we have the whole memory and slate wiped clean. We come into the flesh, and it's here where we determine through you know our fate and our destiny, our desire to serve one or two masters, how it is that we're going to play out that role and who we're going to serve and where we're going to spend eternity. That's that's really what this whole end game is about. This whole second world age. It really oh, yeah. is. Yeah. I was going to make mention, too. I read that um, the whole blog that you sent me where you were talking with Dr. Squat, Scott McQuaid, and, um, and I, I, you know, there's there's a couple of things that I don't agree with him on, uh, you know, especially with him thinking that Yahweh is the Anunnaki God, because uh, there's a whole area called Edenic. Um and this is a, a study, because he says that the Hebrew was based on the Aramaic. But if you study this thing called Edenics, and then you study the scripture, and like the Book of Jubilees and the Book of Jasher, it talks about how the original language was this older Hebrew, that all of the language was, languages were based on this old Hebrew. And that um, that was the original language of paradise, and even all the animals and Adam and Eve Everybody spoke the one language, and it wasn't until uh, the Tower of Babel that everything was split up, and the tongues were confounded, and the tribes and the races were were created um, at that time. But before then, everyone's everything, even because he says also that the Sumerian texts are the oldest written language in the oldest civilization. But that's only after the flood. Before the flood. The, the, you know, Noah and his sons all the way to Enoch and all the way back to Adam. They had their Hebrew, monotheistic, Judeo-Christian um, heritage, culture, and teachings that were coming from uh, Yahweh the Most High and the Word, Yahushua, and all the angels that were then teaching through, you know, all that period of time. And even though all of those civilizations are under the water or have disappeared, 
in sense, you can't say that the Sumerians are the oldest civilization on the planet because they are not. They're just the first one that sprung up after the flood. And so I really think that his, you know, and then he's putting a lot of credence on the Sumerian teachings because then he thinks that they're the oldest teachings. Uh, and so they have already built in disinformation and um, are leading you astray because they're a pagan Babylonian mystery religion that adheres to worshiping the fallen angels. And we've been warned about that, and yet he still fully um, gives credence to all that. Do you, do you have a comment on that? I do, and I'm really glad you, br- I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Brother okay. Zen. Um, um, I'll be careful and not post this particular interview, or if I do, I will edit out any direct criticism about any particular person. But for for oh, you, well, I've I've talked to Scott about this even on my show when I interviewed him. So this is nothing that I wouldn't say to him directly. And in fact, um, you know, I was after I read that article, I'm going to invite him on again to have dialogue about this because I think he's wrong in this in this sense. I, it doesn't go back to Sumer. It goes way back. It goes to Adam, you know? So. Yeah, and, and like I said, this is an excellent point you're bringing up, um, and I want to I want to say a few words on it because it's so important. Um, first of all, thank you for clarifying that. Um, for myself, anyone, and I Anyone who who adamantly denies that the Apostle Paul should not be in Scripture, um, regardless of the rationale, because I have read his book Blue Pit Print for Bondage, and and I'll give him credit; he is he is really an intellect extraordinaire. He really is. Uh, and, I give him full credit on that too. Yeah, he really is. And like like all intellects, even me and you and Alexander included. Um, uh, we don't have everything right. I mean, I, I'm sure I don't. I'm sure you don't. I'm sure Alexander exactly. doesn't, exactly. and right. Scott doesn't either. So what you have to do is um, you have to you know filter it through discernment. And right. my point is, anyone that throws Paul out, um, I, I I I guess I take a caution flag. And um, having said that, though, reading Scott's material, it is really very excellent in many ways, and you can learn a lot, like this, the Sarah and the Penta and how the earth and the fire right. and how right, it's related right. to Saturn. I think there's something to that. And now the key is one shoe doesn't fit all. You know, we have a tendency, like Zachariah Sitchin's books, people have a tendency to say, well, uh, the ancient astronaut theory uh, applies to every person on the planet. Well, no, it doesn't. And that's where the leaven amongst the bread uh, is introduced, the one shoe fits all problem, because there probably were uh, genetic tinkerings. In fact, I'm sure of it, and your research shows that. There was genetic tinkering before the flood and after, but it doesn't mean 100% of everything that lives has had genetic tinkering. And that's mm-hmm. the point. So back to your comment on um, Yahweh, because uh, I want to talk more about this. I, my research has shown that the word Yahweh has has existed in text pre-Bible. So before Job, before Genesis was written, there are other, older texts that sh- have the word Yahweh. So I'd like in a minute for you to comment on your views there. But I certainly agree that when Scott says the a- more ancient languages were Aramaic, that is certainly from my research, not true at all. I'm more in alignment with what you said. There was an original language of God, Hebrew, and right. it was an earlier form, and it, and it, and it, I hate to use the word, but it evolved later to add consonants and take on mm-hmm. a slightly right. newer form. And uh, and there, like you say, if if his if his baseline is the Sumerian uh, culture, which was I think only around six or seven thousand years ago, exactly. fr- from my research, uh, I know there were civilizations hundreds of thousands of years ago, exactly. yep. so, if not longer. So um, can you comment, Brother Zen, on Yahweh, the word being found in ancient texts before Scripture? They war, and they profit off funding both sides of, of doing that over and over and over. And that's also how they um, centralize power, wealth, and control, is by 
funding these wars over time, over and over and over, profiting at the expense of the people, um, you know, slaughtering the masses and blood sacrifice to their to their fallen angel gods and to Lucifer, push an agenda, the whole problem, reaction, solution, and how the New World Order and Satan and his sources work through division and controlled opposition. And a lot of times what we see as a, you know, a division among the minorities is, is really just false because uh, it was created by the elite um, only, you know, to sire, um, to sire tension and to create, and I'm just sharing really what I've found as far as uh, in my life and of research and seeking the truth and serving the Lord. And um, there's many things, you know, a lot of revelations that the Lord has led me to. The First and foremost, the, the skeleton key, in my opinion, was the whole, the conclusion as far as Cain and um, his being a hybrid, uh, the first hybrid child of, of Satan, Lucifer. I'd like to introduce Zen Garcia of Fallen Angels TV. Zen has his radio ministry and, and TV ministry. And uh, Zen, would you like to say a few words about uh, about your ministries? Yeah, I'm, um, basically I'm, I'm not a pastor or a preacher or even any kind of a church authority. I'm just a truth seeker and a fellow investigator and um, for Samuel as described in the Targums and several other different things. But um, that was the skeleton key to unlock all the other things that the Lord then led me into with the Nephilim, the fallen angels, and, and a lot of the other things that we cover on our radio show with the New World Order and the, um, the conspiracy, the, how they you know, use uh, lies and deception and how they do things and cover them up in order to...